Surumi Island is an island that is shrouded in mystery. A dense fog surrounds the island, and it is victim to time loops, repeating the same course of events over and over again. However, when we travel to this island, we are able to solve the mystery of what happened here and break the loop. While many have first heard this story in the version 2.2 World Quest series Through the Mists, the lore was actually in the game since launch. In this video, I'll go over the lore of Surumi Island given to us from both the World Quest series Through the Mists and the artifact set known as Thundering Fury. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, let's move right on and get into the video. Our story begins thousands of years ago on Surumi Island, presumably before the start of the Archon War. At this time, the Thunderbird had covered the island in a dense fog to protect the people from a sea of darkness. A young boy named Rue also lived around this time, and he loved to sing. However, he was rather embarrassed to sing in front of others, so he often went into the fog of the island to sing where no one else could hear him. However, one time while he was singing in the fog, someone did hear him. They descended from the skies above, and now Rue was face to face with the great Thunderbird, the deity who ruled over Surumi Island. Instead of being afraid though, Rue chatted with the deity, and even gave her the name Kana Kapatsir. After her conversation with Rue, she departed, but the boy had left an impact on her, and she wished to see him again. Now, the Thunderbird was a deity who didn't pay much attention to the lives of humans. She knew her lifespan was much longer than theirs, and thus decided it would be best for her to just be indifferent to them. The fact that Rue was able to connect with her showed that he was special. But unfortunately, Rue and the people of Surumi saw this affection in a different light. Over time, some of the people who resided on Surumi Island decided to leave, as they wanted to explore the world beyond their home. However, Rue didn't want them to go, and so he offered himself as a sacrifice to the Thunderbird. The people agreed, and so he was sacrificed. However, when the Thunderbird saw this, she descended upon the land in anger and grief. Lightning flashed and thunder roared as the deity slayed everyone who remained on the island. Following this, the Thunderbird cursed the island to repeat these series of events over and over again. It is also theorized by Sumida and Kama that an object descended from Celestia and crashed into the island, much like the Skyfrost Nail and Dragonspine, which could have further affected the ley lines. Anyways, the only one not affected by this time loop was Rue. He saw everything play out over and over again, while the rest of the people were basically just shadows of the past. He spent thousands of years within this loop, and over time, he witnessed the Hillichurls, Automatoms, and Riftwolves that began to inhabit Surumi. Following the start of the loop, the Thunderbird fled to Sarii Island, where she was eventually hunted down and killed by the Raiden Shogun Beelzebul. The remnants of her power were attempted to be sealed by the Asaze Shrine on Sarai, but there were still at least two Thunder manifestations that were formed out of her lasting anger and grief. However, the curse still remained in effect on Tsurumi even after her death, and would stay that way for thousands of years. During their time in Inazuma, the Traveler would get a commission from the Adventurers Guild and Sumida to explore Surumi Island and retrieve a Mashiro. They reached the island with the help of Kama, and there they met Ryu. He helped them explore the island, and even retrieved a real Mashiro for them. However, this was only the beginning of the Traveler's time on Surumi Island. After learning the truth about what happened on Surumi, the Traveler decided to destroy the Thunderbird's perches in an attempt to stop Rue's sacrifice. However, Rue was actually upset about this, until the Traveler came back with Kama to explain everything that happened after the ceremony to Rue. He decided it was no longer a good idea to sacrifice himself, so they came up with a different idea. With the help of one of the Thunderbird's feathers that was collected during their time on Surumi, the Traveler brought Rue to Kapitsir's final resting place on the broken island of Serai. To keep his promise, Rue sang his song to her one last time. The song caused another feather to appear, and when all the feathers were brought back to the tree within Mount Kana, 
the curse was lifted. The Thunderbird's grief had finally subsided, and no longer would the land be plagued by time loops of sorrow. Rue was thankful to the Traveler, and he wanted to explore the outside world, but Unfortunately, he also knew from visiting Sarai that he wasn't meant to leave Surumi, as both he and Kapitir had died long ago. And so the Traveler departed, saying goodbye to Ru, and finally letting him rest. And that's it for this video. Honestly, it's so cool to me that some of the lore we got at the launch of the game was finally explored here, nearly a year later. It makes me so excited to see what comes next, and what other bits of lore are foreshadowing future stories. Anyways, I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.